Hey there, thanks for tuning in. I'm Matt Pinder, author of Beyond the Automobile and professional transportation engineer. I'm excited to share this week with you another example of leading design in complete streets. Let's go check it out. For this week's project, we're going to Ottawa, Canada in the south end, just south of downtown in the Alta Vista neighborhood. The street we're looking at is Heron Road. That's those bright green lines there. At the west end is Heron Station on the transitway, and we're going to be following the multi-use path that exits there, joins Heron Road with new cycle tracks that aren't visible on the map yet, going through a few signalized intersections, and then ending uh, in front of Canadian Tire, just west of Bank Street, where these will be picked up later in the future, and I'll get into more of that later. The project, the Heron Road Separating Cycling Facilities, began in 2017 when design was started, and it's filling in a gap that's part of the Baseline Road Bus Rapid Transit Corridor, a major east-west bus rapid transit project planned in the city. This project specifically added cycle tracks along most of the area shown in red here. The project cost about $2.75 million, funded partially by the City of Ottawa and partially by the province. Construction finished in December 2020, so it's been open for a couple of years now. We're going to start our ride at the west end of the project at Heron Station. The station carries uh, is a stop on the Ottawa Transit Way and carries very frequent buses heading between the south end and Herdman Station where people connect to the LRT. This is an existing multi-use pathway that previously connected Heron Road to that station. So you can see it's uh, the asphalt is a bit older, but you can see it's it's a well-lit pathway. It's cleared in the winter, so it's a vital link to transportation and to public transit. Here's where the new project starts, and suddenly we have a new two-way cycle track next to the existing sidewalk. So if volumes get a little bit higher here, cyclists are segregated from pedestrians, making it safer for everyone. You'll notice the cycle track is also pretty well separated from the road by a couple meters, and there's probably about a meter between the cycle track and the sidewalk. This is a pretty generous amount of buffer and makes it a lot more comfortable. Now we're coming up into a fairly unique transition here. We're going from a two-way facility to one way. So that means that we have to cross the road here and I'm waiting on a bicycle detector. So the signal is going to know that I'm there and start the countdown. Very long cycle at this intersection. I definitely felt a little bit impatient waiting to cross, but for the purpose of a video, we can just speed it right up. Green light, let's head east across the intersection. You can see a cross ride marked there with some green paint that's starting to chip away. We turn through the protected intersection corner you see there. I glanced right before I did so because there is a cycle track we're merging with. And to give you a glimpse of what's downstream there, the west end of that cycle track is just a bit further. It'll be extended much, much further as part of a project in the future, the baseline BRT. And ahead you can see our first bus stop we're going to interact with with this design. That's called an island platform bus stop where uh, passengers cross the cycle track and then wait at a shelter on the island. So now our cycle track is, you'll notice, a fair bit closer to the road. Even though there's a lot of boulevard space, you'll also see that there's some really nice trees there. Um, this project did not want to uh, remove those trees, rightfully so, because they're now providing us with a nice amount of shade, and the same thing with the sidewalk. Now I want to share a positive and a negative about this crossing. You'll see that the cycle track ramps down nicely to the road, making a really nice, smooth, comfortable path of travel. Uh, but at the same time, cyclists are exposed to traffic for a very long distance over that crossing. I think they probably could have really tightened that up, given that it's just a residential street on the right. And here we are arriving at our next protected intersection. There's several along this stretch, so we're waiting comfortably in the protected corner. There's one of the incoming cross rides to the left. And there's, if we were turning right at this intersection, where we would go, to cut through the protected corner without having to mix with traffic in the intersection. Heading east again with another green light. You can see a really long pedestrian refuge there that's going to provide lots of comfortable space 
and our cycle track bends out to be adjacent to the road again. Uh, something that I did notice here is that the curb lanes for the roadway are still quite wide. It seems like this project could have really reduced that, which would have helped slow travel speeds along the corridor. Uh, but cycling, the, the facility is pretty wide and there's a, a decent buffer from traffic for the whole length and it's fully raised up in the boulevard. So it, it works quite well. There's another bus stop on the left and on the right is some uh, auto oriented business. And so the cycle track feels a little bit weird here being right next to parked cars in a parking lot, but still very set back from the roadway, feeling very comfortable. There's some people using the sidewalk. Now we have grass on the left and the right, maybe a good spot, opportunity to plant some trees. And the final protected corner of the project. And on the right is a Canadian Tire busy shopping center. So it's nice definitely to have this intersection. And in future, that cycle track will continue further on to Bank Street as part of a separate project. Now there's one more thing I wanna talk through before I wrap this video. You remember I mentioned earlier the long crossing distance across the side street for a cycle track. When we throw on the measurements, we really see the distance we're dealing with here. A uh, cyclist is cycling almost 30 meters unprotected. Pedestrian is crossing 10 meters. And you can see really wide sweeping corner radii there, uh, 11 to 12 meters. That's pretty significant for a local side street intersection. So to give you perspective of what might actually be needed here, I've shown a heavy single unit truck making that corner with uh, some pretty typical turning tolerances. That's like the biggest U-Haul truck you would ever rent. And for a very quiet side street, it's very normal to allow that truck to turn across the center line. And then when it turns onto the major road, it can use all available receiving lanes as well. And you can see even this pretty big large truck does not need anywhere close to the amount of space that the design provides. Finally, uh, we show what could be if I really tightened up the design to just match the turning path of those trucks. The corner radii get way smaller. The bicycle protection is extended further into the intersection. The crossing distance is just over half of what it was before. And even the pedestrian crossing distance is way less, gone from seven down to six and a half. And there you have it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to follow along my channel and I will plan to have another post out next month. I will see you then.